Hi guys and welcome to what your notes could possibly look like. I might have said that twice already. That's because Miss Hughes is trying to find the best way to record these. The nice thing about doing notes this way and having a chance to go back over what we did in class is that you can pause me at any time or speed me up depending on what information you know already. So we're going to start with the vocabulary that we reviewed today in class. What I would like for you guys to do is pause the video right now and draw this image that you see on the screen and then we're going to go through and I'm going to write down the vocabulary words and give you a couple of examples. And you can always fill in your own examples as we go. So we're gonna start with the biggest one, the one that includes all, you know what, I lie. We're actually gonna start with whole numbers, the ones we're already used to. So whole numbers are positive, uh, positive numbers and zero. And zero. Notice how I'm using shorthand for this. I do not need to be super fancy. I just want to make sure my point gets across. And I'm going to put some examples of whole numbers in my color that I chose for whole numbers. So zero is a whole number. Whoop. Uh, five, seven, one, twenty. All whole numbers. Okay, so go ahead and put a couple of examples in your notes. The next one that we're really focusing on for this unit is called integers. So integers are all of these positive numbers and also includes their opposite. So the negative numbers and zero. So positive numbers their opposites which are negative and zero. Okay, for my examples for that, I'm gonna say let's do negative 13, negative seven, uh, we could do a positive eight. I'm gonna put a crazy one in here. I'm gonna do negative 20 divided by four. And the reason that one, even though it's written as a ratio, is still an integer because actually once I divide this, this is going to equal negative 5. And that negative 5 is a whole number. It's just right now written as a ratio. It isn't really a ratio. It is negative 5. Okay, our last group that we're going to focus on for this unit is, an, is a rational number. And this is includes positives, positive numbers, their opposites and zero, and also includes anything that can be written as a ratio of two numbers. So that would include a fraction, a decimal, or a percent number out of 100. Okay, and a couple of examples of some ratio, uh, some ratios, some rational numbers that we'll be seeing is we could see something like negative 3 fourths. We could see the opposite of negative 3 fourths, which is positive 3 fourths. We could see that in its decimal form or in its percent form. But we could also see something like negative 400 percent. Okay, so go ahead and pause. Make sure you have these definitions and then come back for the next piece. All right. While you guys were paused, I went ahead and added our other two definitions that we went over. So it could be a good time to pause. We're going to go through this example um, together, but you are going to need to know what opposites are. And I saw someone in the chat today talk about how opposites, when we add two opposites together, we get zero. And that's exactly correct because opposites are on opposite sides of the number line and they, when they meet or come together, they form zero. So let's say, for example, I want to find the opposite of negative 3. Okay, so if I want the opposite of negative 3, I can see that this is three spaces away from, from 0. 
So I need to move another three spaces on the opposite side of the number line. And that point is going to be on positive three. So both are three units away. Number lines are going to be super useful as we go through this unit because you'll be able to see that the further away from zero we get to the left is where our smaller numbers are. And the further we get to the right is where our bigger numbers are. This is super important, especially when we look at smaller, because often we think of 5 as bigger than 4. But when we're talking about negative numbers, negative 5 is smaller than negative 4 because it is further away from 0 on the number line. The other thing we talked about in class today was absolute value. And this was the distance a number is from 0 on the number line. Oh, look at how I spelled dis distance, distance, distance. There should be a T right there, Miss Hughes. Okay, distances are always positive. So if there's something inside these fraction bars, it's asking how far away is four from zero on the number line. These are positive. Okay, and I can look at four right here and I can see that four is four units away. That's what it's asking. How far away is four from zero? And it is four units. So the absolute value of four is four. That's why when I go over to my second example of negative two, and I look at negative two on the number line, I see that negative two is two units away from zero. Think about the example of me walking to 7-Eleven. Even if I did it backwards, I would still be moving a positive distance. I would just look really funny while doing it. So pause and make sure you can come up with a couple of examples and this definition in your notes. All right, so while you are paused finishing your notes, I put the last activity that you should feel pretty comfortable with by the end of this week, which is ordering and comparing rational numbers. You'll notice right here I have a list of integers um, and rational numbers here, and I'd like us to graph it on this line, and then we're going to decide what is our greatest value and what is our least greatest value. So I'm going to start with the first one that I see, and luckily this number line that I built actually is in fourths. So I see that my first one is negative one fourth. So uh, that is graphed right there. And then the next one is in decimal form. I have negative um, zero and 75 hundredths. So for me, since this is in fractions, it'd be really helpful to know that conversion. So one thing I could do is I could write this as 75 over 100, which I know simplifies down to 3 fourths, and it is negative. So I'm going to find negative 3 fourths on my number line and graph that point there. Next I have 5 twelfths. 5 twelfths is not going to be on this because I'm only in fourths, but I can kind of make a rough estimate based on fourths and try and figure out where that would be. I know one half or another way to write one half um, in twelfths is six twelfths, okay, because half of twelve is six. And I think five twelfths is going to be kind of close to that. So I'm going to put a point about right there. Again, it's not 100% precise, but I'm trying to figure out what is bigger and which is smaller. Okay, so that was 5 twelfths. I also have the number 3 fourths, which is on my graph. I have negative 1, which is also on my graph. And I have 1 eighth. So I have 1 fourth and nothing smaller than that. I can tell 1 eighth is going to be smaller and I can kind of think about this as terms of force, if I wanted to know what eighths, what fourths were in terms of eighths, I would need to be in, I'd have to multiply both the top and the bottom by two, and that would give me two eighths. So this point right here is two eighths, so I know I need to be somewhere halfway in between 
which would be right here. Looking at this data, I can now tell which is my smallest value and which is my greatest based on how far away they are from zero. So my smallest value is going to be negative one and my greatest value is going to be three-fourths. So if you could pause the screen and go ahead and order these in, in order from least to greatest. And then come back and check and see if you got it right. All right, so your line, your set of data should be ordered this way with negative one being the least and three-fourths being the greatest. Using a number line like this is really gonna help you determine which is bigger and which is smaller. You'll also need to feel pretty comfortable converting in between fractions. There's a lot of tools out there that can help you with that. Remember to come visit me during our asynchronous day and we will review all of these tools. Okay, um, I'm gonna keep working on finding ways to make this look better so you don't have to keep folding up the screen or pausing me. But for right now, this is, this is where the technology is at. Good luck and let me know if you guys have any questions.